can you begin by telling me your name? My name is Clay Blazer. Alrighty, uh, can you tell me uh, where you live and what do you do for a living? Um, I live in Parrotsville, Tennessee, which is about between Newport and Greenville, and then I'm a teacher full-time, and then I am a part-time farmer. All right, awesome. If you can be such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how long have you lived in Parrotsville? I'm 43 in my whole life. Pretty much other than I, whenever I was in college um, from, what, 19 to 22 or so, I was at, lived in Knoxville at the University of Tennessee, but then the rest of that time I've lived on my farm. It's very interesting, I think, the things that you would look at because I, I have learned as an adult, and especially with where I'm at, I think growing up on a farm gives you a lot of a unique perspective of life that you don't have when you don't live on a farm. Um, obviously, number one, hard work. I mean, that's just very, very important to me. I mean, and that's something that, again, you, you kind of can't live on a farm without working hard. I think um, I'm very much like from a personality standpoint, like I know I've worked with people and I have, and I mean a lot of people who are really kind of very rigid and like, you know, they have a, a schedule and they don't deviate from that. And like any time, and like, and they plan things out, you know, to the nth degree. And then when something goes wrong, like, I mean, it totally throws them into a tailspin. You kind of can't be that person when you're a farmer because like natural disaster, I mean, you, you can't let things kind of work you up. In other yeah, words, you definitely have to adapt. And so I think that, you know, there's a lot of good life skills that, that I've just kind of picked up from being on a farmer. You know, I think hard work is a good skill. I think adaptability is a great skill. I mean, now I have the ways that I want things to be done and, you know, like, you know, my day or whatever else to go. But um, I, my mom and I, we're still both, we still both actively farm. And if we make a plan, then you, that, that I, that's when the cows get out. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've been on my way somewhere and I've had to turn around, go change my clothes, you know, d get whatever particular piece of work had, had to happen. Or you've got a cow that's having trouble having a calf. I mean, mm -hmm. just some kind of a problem. So life's not neat and tidy and it's really hard to kind of plan things out. But I also think as a result of that, like I don't get overwhelmed very easily. Um, just because there's always, you know, there's always 50,000 things to do on a farm. Like you never get caught up with your work. I know you're on a farm and you never get your work caught. Like there is no such thing as being caught up with your work. I mean, because right. as soon as you get done with one, I mean, there's always a fence that could be repaired. There's always something you could be doing. So I think that whole, that just makes you, you know, just again, much more adaptable. So, I mean, I think that that, um, that's something I think about. Um, my sisters would say they learned to cuss in the tobacco patch, and I would kind of agree. I mean, you know, because you do. I mean, it, it, at times it was hard. You know, it's really, really hard work. It's hot work mm -hmm. um, at times, you know, but at the same point in time, like, they didn't enjoy it, but now I've always enjoyed it. Like, I mean, even from whenever I was younger, um, I've always enjoyed working on the farm and just, you know, doing a variety of things like that. So, I've always enjoyed like my farm background mm -hmm. and I think that that is just something that is um, like my dad I think that that's it we have always been conservationists um, so we do a lot of practices that I know that other people and I see other farmers when they don't do it and I just kind of cringe I mean so I mean like a lot of our conservation practices that we will use I, um, I wish we could get more people to do it but it's just hard to get people to change their ways but my dad was just an avid um, it was important for us to build up our ground. It was important for us to, you know, the land was something that we were, that was, that was, I guess, just a, something that we helped that we didn't just like take from. And I feel like that that is, um, farmers aren't the enemy with climate change. You know what I mean? I think that they can actually be one of the biggest allies that climate change has if we can educate them to understand like, okay, that in a lot of ways this is better and there are, um, it's just a better way to go about it. One that I think about is whenever we feed our hay. Um, we have, we're on a rotational grazing system. Just a more efficient way to graze. It keeps down your weeds, you know, it does a lot of other things like that. But, and I think that, um, you know, us, utilizing a lot of these conservation practices are just overall good for the environment. Mm -hmm. um, because like we rotate our cattle through that and then like in the wintertime, 
we take all of ours and we typically try to put our hay on a hillside and roll it down the hill. And then it's double. I mean, some people will actually have like a concrete pad and they'll feed their cows and then they'll take the manure and then take a machine and spread it out. Well, we don't do that because we just, ours naturally do it. You know, we put it on a hillside and you run them down through there and then that, you know, that's where there's manure. And then the next day, the next time when you do it, you put it down another hill. And, and so you kind of spread out your own manure and then I'm not having to burn, use the tractor. I'm not having to burn fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. I'm not having to do those kinds of things. And I, and we try to do that as much as, you know, and that's just one example of things. But I think that, um, and, I, and I definitely owe that to my dad. I mean, he was just, he was an avid conservationist. And that was just something that we have done, you know, for years. And there's no doubt that climate change has had an impact on what we do. Um, it's not even necessarily the heat. I would say it's the extremes like that we, I mean, I don't know that it's a lot hotter here than it was even like whenever I was a kid, but like we just have these stretches of heat. Um, so I think um, being much more keenly aware of like just that we can have wet years and dry year, you know what I mean? Like with the, with the changing patterns of that, I think that is one way that we have seen, you know, a really, really big, um, impact and the idea of global warming is that you just have more extremes mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that in general that it's going to be hotter it just means that overall you know what i mean the weather's that, just going to get real freaky yeah it, and it does get real freaky and i think we can even look at that whenever you notice just i mean the severity of storms mm -hmm. that we're having i mean whether it's um and it's not just like the like the atlantic hurricanes but i mean even just it seems as if like some of our snowstorms i mean again that when they hit certain parts are just I just feel like I'm always hearing about a record-breaking storm. I mean, and when you just look at that, we just do seem to be having a lot more extremes that just weren't plausible. And I, again, I know that that becomes very anecdotal. But on my farm, the way the road kind of comes in, there is an area, we, there used to be a creek, but this creek, I mean, and it's fed from a str of spring probably eight or 10 miles away. And the creek used to run through here and then it just ran into a hole and it actually came out in the French Broad River. I mean, about five miles from my house through underground caves. The whole area is built with caves. Well, basically because of all these caves in this area, places have fallen out. And so the water doesn't even make it all the way to us most of the time, but in the wet seasons it does. And once in a blue moon, um, there, that water will get up. And we actually have, in the springtime on my farm, we have like a big five, about five or seven acre pond that just, you know, covers the whole little area. Well, um, it, for a while, it was about every 10 years, there would be an instance where we would get a special kind of a rain combination and the water would get up over the road. I mean, as higher than the road sign. But um, whenever that water gets up over that, like the last time it was over at three weeks. One, and whenever you see that water getting up, because we have animals on different places, you have to be like, okay, you have to make sure you don't get them stuck somewhere, you know, where you can't get to them. Because I know that when that water gets up over the road, that time it was about three weeks. The law, I mean, in 94, it was up for like 49 days. Oh, wow. Um, which, you know, that's a long time to not be able to access that. And then not to mention, of course, it's in the spring. That was in February. The one then happened in March, and then it was the end of April before it ever went down. But you know, obviously the grass is gonna be dead underneath there. And then you got all that debris that comes down through that you have to clean up, and then you have to make sure that it won't be damaging to the animals, that they won't get caught up in, you know, I mean, all the things that go with that. I guess, I mean, I guess if that were just gonna be my thing that I would say is, I just know a lot of those conservation practices and things that we do, I, I can just, I can see the benefits. And I just think that it's important to to take care of the 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 environment and the earth just in general and try to leave it you know in better shape than it was before